It is back to school time, and that uh, has us thinking about so many things that other people can do. Khan Academy has lots and lots of courses available online, and I just wonder what subjects are actually in highest demand right now? Well, some of the, the, the old classics are very popular. Your uh, introduction to algebra, biology, chemistry, physics. Uh, actually, from, from uh, really the last financial crisis, things like finance, personal <laughs> finance, have, have been very popular and have stayed very popular. Who, who's taking these classes? I, I mean, I know it's offered around the globe. I know it's students and adults. But if you really had to break down who's doing what, walk us through it. So the bulk of our users are, I would say, late elementary school through early college. And they are learning these STEM classes, especially math, science. But there's also a lot of users in humanities and things like history. And we have a whole new offering in uh, American government and politics. You keep adding partnerships with school districts, too. I, I just wonder, are your courses being used by students more in school than at home at this point? So when we got started, most people used us at home on their own. We call them independent learners. But very quickly, we made tools for teachers so that they could see what their students were working on and keep track of them. And we had a lot of grassroots adoption. We have over a quarter million teachers, registered mm -hmm. teachers, who use Khan Academy in some way in their classrooms. What we've recently tried to push is, we have all these efficacy studies that if students are able to use the platform, and the platform isn't just videos, it's exercises where kids can learn at their own time and pace. And we're seeing that if you allow kids to learn at their own time and pace and remediate gaps, uh, that they can learn a lot faster. And so if we let them learn at their own time and pace, those gaps don't have to happen. So it's a way for, for students to kind of go back and say, OK, I, I wasn't quite up to speed on what was happening here, but I can make sure I do a little extra studying, a little, a little extra boning up at home. Yeah, well, well, the classic problem, every teacher will tell you that if they have a classroom of 25, 30, 35 students, all of those students are at different levels. A lot of the students might not even be ready for the grade level work. A lot of the students might be ready to move ahead. Even the kids who are ready for grade level might have a gap here or there. And the gold standard has always been personalized instruction, differentiation, allowing the teacher to meet every student where they are. But you can imagine it's, it's near impossible to do it with 30 students. And so in a classroom, we like to imagine that that we can be a tool that can empower that great teacher to better meet every student where they are. So every student is able to fill in their gaps, move it. Some kids will accelerate forward. And then the teacher gets dashboards to know, hey, uh, they're working fine. But hey, look like Sal's having trouble. And Becky's already mastered that concept. Maybe she can tutor him. Or hmm. uh, maybe I can do some small group instruction with those other students. Well, let's talk about what you're doing for teachers, too. You're, you're even offering free prep classes for aspiring teachers. What, what's your thought there? We do have a teacher shortage in this country. If you're an aspiring teacher, you probably know about the Praxis exam. It's an exam taken in most states for teachers to show that they have the content knowledge necessary to be teachers. Now, unfortunately, it has sometimes been a gate for a lot of teachers to be able to get into the profession. And so now we're able to offer free official practice, practice for the Praxis uh, mm -hmm. to allow more teachers to go into the profession. You know, what, what's next? You, you keep conquering issue after issue and taking these things on. Is there ever going to be a Khan Academy diploma that's recognized by businesses? That's my hope. Uh, you know, as a nonprofit, our mission is free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. And there's really three pillars to that. One is try to give world-class material away for free to the world. Another pillar is allow people to learn at their own time and pace. We talked about that. And then the last one is how does someone prove what they know to the, to the world? Uh, and that could be being able to get some type of credit for the work you do, maybe college credit, and, and that has a big issue in lowering college costs. Or it might be, hey, I learned about finance or personal finance or statistics or computer science on Khan Academy. Maybe I can get an internship or an apprenticeship or a job out of it.